I really want to play a multiplayer game. Let me call up my mate. Hello? Yo, bro, do you want to play... What do you want? Yo, bro, do you want to play online? Why don't you play some adventure games? Because you ain't got any friends. Yes, I do. They're just busy. Okay. Okay. You want me to tell you something? Go on, then. I'm not even real. What you say? <laughs> Man, I've got to get some friends. <laughs> If you're like me and you don't have many friends to play online, don't you worry, because we're gonna run through the 20 best adventure games that you should play on your PS5. Get your hands off that. Number 20. Batman Arkham Knight was probably my favorite Batman game ever. It is the fourth and final game from the Arkham series. You will play as Batman for the last time and a bit of Nightwing. You will take on some incredible enemies such as Harvey Dent, Harley Quinn, Penguin. That's just a few. The story is incredible. The mechanics, the fighting, the way you move. This is the closest thing to feeling like Batman. Unless you're dressing up as Batman in the middle of the night and walking around a bit. <laughs> Side missions are incredible and they fit so well with the main story. Every mission you do feels a part of the story. Number 19. Uncharted 4 A Thief's End was incredible on the PS4, but when I say the PS5 upgrade, it is even more stunning. Incredible visuals, 60 FPS. The game is near perfect. And I'm not exaggerating. You will lose yourself in the story of Nathan Drake. I recommend you play all of the games in order because it's just so good. Nathan Drake is just such a badass. It is a very, very deep story. What is even more incredible is that you get to play it on a PS1 console for a game that was designed for the PS4 on the upgraded PS5. <laughs> Whoa. Number 18. Horizon Forbidden West. Now I've done a few videos of this. This story is incredible. I just didn't like the first game because the controls were clunky. It was a frustrating game, but Horizon Forbidden West is a polished game from the first one. Machines that you fight against are incredible. You have to upgrade your weapon, learn what traps and ammo that you should be using against certain enemies. You have to think. Aloy is a great character. I just, just don't know what's going on with her fucking hair. Aloy? Number 17. Now the next game, I'll give you a bit of a clue. What the fuck is that? Yeah, you guessed it. Spider-Man on the PS5 is hot. Damn, it is so good. I did play it on my PS4. Just about because that, that console was going to take off. It is a very long game and there are tons of things to do. There are also three DLCs in the game that you can buy, which all ties into the story that comes afterwards with Spider-Man Miles Morales. Yeah, oh, it's, a, it's a great game. It's a great game. <laughs> My eyes! I'm gonna have to replace that. Number 16. Returnal is a third-person roguelike shooter and has received amazing reviews and awards. I feel like I've done this before. You gate crash on a shape-shifting world as you play as Celine. I think that's her name. You're in some futuristic weird world, but the thing is, when you die, she wakes up in the same spot on this world and you have to play the game again. But what's interesting, the world will change. Even though you're starting back from the crash site, you will see that the monsters are different, the aliens are different. It can be quite relentless. You can save the game at any point now. At launch, I do believe people were complaining that you couldn't pause or save the game, so they did patch that in. Uncover the mysteries of space. I feel like I've done this before. Number 15. I love this game because it's just so beautiful. Kena Bridge of Spirits. You are a spirit guide and it is your job to clear the land of an evil force, help lost spirits get to the afterlife and unravel the mystery of what happened to your land. Around 10 hours long, but it does make a good change because so many games that are coming out, they're just so long and exhausting. And that's what I love about this game. It's quite short, but there's also quite a lot of stuff to do. Side quests, little collectibles. You get some amazing perks, weapon upgrades and moves whilst unraveling some incredible characters that you meet along the way. This is a must play. Number 14. If you like survival horror games, then this game is for you because probably will be 
shit in your pants every night. Resident Evil Biohazard, it requires a certain level of tolerance. I had to have a break of Resident Evil games when I played Village as I needed to play a game to calm me down. You play as Ethan Winters, which is a great character. A bit stupid and a bit slow sometimes, but you find out that your wife Mia is actually alive and you go on a quest to find her. Although she's kind of pissed that you, <laughs> you took so long to get there. Number 13. Metro Exodus is a great survival FPS. It's not one of those games you will be enjoying different guns and killing a hell of a lot of enemies. Yeah, you have to be strategic with your ammo. Don't make the same mistake I did. You gotta use your knife when you can. You need to aim for your headshots. You need to save your bullets. Use the right weapons for certain enemies. The story is actually touching and you will be moved by the end of the game. The world is infested and you live underground in a place called the Metro Exodus, a train. You are going to explore the open world above. You need to see if there's people alive. Just make sure you don't run out of ammo. <laughs> Good thing I've got this gun. <laughs> Number 12. I'm not much of a Star Wars fan, but for a game to get incredible reviews such as a 9 out of 10, Star Wars A Jedi is a must play. It's described as a lightened up Dark Souls with the action of an Uncharted game. It's a dark story, but a complex one, so I'm not going to dive too much into it as I don't really know what's going on. But on the PS5 with the 60 FPS update, it looks aesthetically pleasing and it's quite cheap now because it's been out for quite a while, so I definitely think you should try this out. Number 11. I've talked about this game on the channel Death Stranded Director's Cut. It's received mixed reviews by gamers as you are basically a delivery guy delivering cargo across an open world land with a baby on your front. Because those situations happen quite a lot. You must deliver cargo whilst enemies are trying to kill you. The PS5 Director's Cut comes with some great upgrades. More missions have been added. You get more weapons that you can use in the game and it is a crisp 60 FPS. On top of that, haptic feedback and the adaptive triggers. Definitely worth losing yourself in this open world adventure game. Make sure you take care of that baby. Number 10. I've spoken about this game on my review. This is the ultimate definition of an open world game. It becomes so enjoyable when you just simply explore the world. And also look on YouTube. I, I did need some help on YouTube. Some unexpected bosses that will just rape you to shit. You will find some hidden caves, some hidden worlds. It is just so unpredictable what you will find from simply exploring. You will lose yourself in this game unless you find it too hard and annoying that there's no Ubisoft arrow. <laughs> Number 9 a Plague Tale Innocence. This game has received insane reviews. This is based in 1348. The plague ravages the Kingdom of France. You and your younger brother Hugo are hunted by the Inquisition through villages devastated by the disease. On their way, you will have to join forces with other orphans and escape huge swarms of rats using fire and light. The children will face darkest days of history in their struggle to survive. You have to use your brain. It's quite an appealing story. Great reviews on this game. Number eight. Another game that will have you shit in the bed in the morning. <coughs> Resident Evil Village is a follow on from Resident Evil 7. It is such a beautiful game. You play as Ethan Winters once again. You get to explore different worlds. My best bit was the castle. You do get chased around by some hot vampire lady. <laughs> she could bite me any day. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? Number seven. A continuation from Spider-Man and Miles Morales. I actually enjoyed more of this game than the first one. Maybe it's because of his insane upgraded powers. He has his slick black suit. Maybe it's because he can swing around with a cat in his backpack. You get an insight into Miles Morales and it sets up everything in Spider-Man 3. Man, I hope they have co-op on that. Number six. Demon's Souls, yeah, I loved and hated this game. This gave me so many mixed emotions that was turning into a psycho. Holy Jesus. Hardest game I've ever played. I've only played two Souls games, but this is the hardest one out of all of them. But if you're up for the challenge, give this game a try. It will test your patience. You will not be breaking your PlayStation 5 controller. <laughs> Number five. 
A game that I still haven't completed, Guardians of the Galaxy is an original story with a shitload of comedy. The characters are hilarious and the combat is so fun. It's an original story and they did a great job with the game. So many different worlds you visit, different enemies and the characters as well. They're similar to the ones in the movies, but they're not because they make it their own. Number four. Now I don't really have to big up this game because this received ridiculous awards all over the place. This will be getting a PS5 upgrade eventually, so even more worth the purchase. You play as Gerald and you take on the world full of monsters and mysteries. It is an insane, massive open world. Craft potions, use your different swords depending on what enemies. And damn, does he have great hair. I look like Gerald, don't I? Fuck. Number three. With all the bad press of this game, I bought this game on sale because I thought, you know what, it's getting a PS5 upgrade. I am so surprised with this game. This is kind of the game I thought this would be. I am having a shitload of fun with this game. I've experienced very little, if not no glitches, only some funny glitches. <laughs> But the story is touching, it's deep, there is so much to do in this game, then you won't be disappointed with this game. Honestly, try and get it on sale. Number two. Now the sequel to this game has been coming out for around 10 years. And at this rate, it will be released in 2077. But God of War on the PS5 with its 60 FPS update, linear game, but one you will not forget. The adventure is amazing with Kratos and boy. <laughs> You embark on this amazing journey with these two, unravel mysteries, puzzles, such a must play before Ragnarok comes out, eventually. Number one. I've spoken about this game a lot on the channel and I gave it a perfect score. Let me give you a clue of what this game is. <laughs> The story of Jin Sakai and Tsushima is madness. Embarking on this crazy journey to save your people against the Mongols, this game was so good. If you haven't played it, I don't know what you're fucking doing. I racked up over a hundred hours of the game, two playthroughs. I loved every bit of this game. You are a samurai, you feel like a samurai. The combat is perfect. This is a must play, especially with the director's cut and with the expansion of Iki Island. There are so many surprises in that DLC. You will not be disappointed. Play the fucking game. Let's take a look at the comment of the day from my previous video. Shout out to Marconi Napari. I um, don't know if I've said that right, but yes, needed a dedicated PS5 channel. Awesome video as always. This is a dedicated PlayStation channel. Make sure you like and subscribe. Let me know what you think. Are there any games that I've missed out? Make sure you comment below. Don't say The Last of Us Part 2.